All right, here's a hopefully quick video on how to clean out a vat on a resin 3D printer and uh, remove an error or a, or a failed print from it. This is my frozen Sonic Mighty 4K. I'm using Epax Hard uh, Gray resin, but you can use whatever resin you want. First step is you undo the screws. The um, Put on gloves, obviously, and I'm gonna use two different kinds of gloves. These are just like simple nitro gloves that are one-sided, um, but they're cloth on the back because I'm gonna change into gloves that are a little more robust in a second, but I'm not doing anything except taking my screws off here. Hold on one second. Try not to, if you have a printer like this, not to drop your screws in the liquid because then you'll be cleaning them for days with IPA and feel like a real ding-dong, which I have done before. So I've got this unscrewed. I've got this ready to come off. I got gloves on. I've got my, this is my, uh, my other video I showed how to make this. It's just a resin drainer. Get my resin, make sure you're putting it into the same kind of resin or the same bottle that you're using. Uh, get a resin bottle. This is a, just a giant plastic strainer. I got the 99 cent store. I got a set of these like three or four for like a dollar. So go to your dollar tree or wherever you have, uh, five below, whatever. And then you just put it on the stand. You want to put it somewhere where it can sit for several minutes because it's going to have to drain for you know several minutes. That's why you make this. You don't have to hold it. Simply take your vat off and then uh, in the cleanest, swiftest motion that you can. Actually, you know what? I'm going to mistake. I'm going to do it one I'll do it the way I normally do it so I don't wreck it trying to show off for a video. I do a two-step process, guys. That's right, two steps. First step is I drain it up mostly with this one. Or how did I do it? I, don't know. Uh, I just started using this stand. I used to just hold it by hand. But I, I, first, I take my bat off and I start dripping it in by, like, so I have a nice, clear 100% shot in. Ah, perfect. And then, once the resin's kind of dripping and going, that's when I put the strainer on the thing and the base. And that's when I draw, I, put, I use the magic of this. Um, and the reason I do that is because I don't do it right in the vat. Because at the beginning sometimes, you and I did, if, you, if your vat's really full like mine was, you will over pour and you will get a little bit of resin on the side here. And I like to wipe that off with a paper towel. Um, um, you're not going to use paper towels for the rest of this, this process, but you can use this. So I don't, you can use it for this portion. So I don't get resin all over my cleaner thing. And if you do, you can wipe it down or you can cure it or whatever. And then this is like, this is the thing that we made in the other video. I showed you how to make it. Just put your vat here and let your vat sit for five, 10 minutes. Uh, and you're good. With your towels, you're using to wipe stuff down. I'm putting them in this thing, this is with the thing of, uh, of supports, because I'm gonna cure all this either in the sun or the UV flashlight or in my, in my curing pot or my, my UV curing station before it's done. Uh, the good news is normally, um, I had a part fail, but it looks like it's just little pieces inside, like, a, like an arm or something fell off. I thought there was gonna be something stuck to the FEP. And let's see if I can pick up the camera here. Now do this. So you'll notice with the outlines of my stuff that I printed, uh, but there's just ah, there's just a little bit of um, goop in the like little chunks of stuff in my um, in my strainer. So the good news is I'm not gonna have to do the thing where you scrape it backwards with your hand and all that stuff. But I am gonna let this drain for a moment, and I'm gonna straighten the camera and make sure I'm filming the right place before I put the goop uh, change gloves and get real goopy. So. Like I said, this is going to drain out. It's just this, this just lets it go. So all the resin. So one, you're not wasting wasting resin, and two, it's easier to clean out once you start cleaning it out. Um, and there's a couple ways to do it. I have a really good stand for my Illigo, uh, Illigo Mars vats. That's like a little. It's like the shape of the vat. That, that little grooves in it. You can set the vat down on your table. I don't have one for the for the. Um, for the Mighty 4K, because I think it's too new. I made this lid on my FDM printer that's supposed to, it's bit too big, you know, it's bit big for my FDM, so you print out two pieces, but the pieces don't fit together, but it is the width of the vat, so I think I can just have it apart and set the vat on there. The reason I'm doing that is I don't want to set the vat down on my table that has dust and sand and dog hair and God knows what. Um, so I'll get a brand new shop towel sometimes, like this blue shop towel and set it down, or if I want to, like if I'm feeling fancy, I'll get that stand, um, you know, the lid upside down, or I'll make a new lid or stand someday. I just haven't had time to do that so this is pretty cleaned off if you can see um, it's more you know and I didn't have to hold it the whole time if you're wearing different gloves you can go in with like uh, nitro gloves and, and use your finger but I don't want to do that right now I'm not gonna I'm not that worried about wasting you know a couple extra drops especially since we're making an educational video so I feel like we're doing it as part of things so that's the vat that's been drained out I make sure there's no no <laughs> resin on the edges here like of this I don't touch the fat but I just don't want it on here because I'm gonna set it in the shop towel and it's gonna live on the shop towel for the time being. This stuff can just sit here 
so that the final remnants of you know the resin can drip into the bottle. But now I'm gonna change gloves because these gloves are great for changing stuff out with. And these are actually like, kind of like the Dexfit gloves. I'll put a link in the, in the um in the description of this video. But also these are from the dollar store. You can get like I got like five or six pairs of these for a dollar each because they're just they're just for handling for taking bats on and off and doing very light handling. They're not for submerging in resin or doing anything where you're gonna get your hands in resin. And I mean, unless you don't be like one of those tough guys or tough people to go, like, oh, I don't wear gloves and I don't care. Resin will give you a chemical burn sooner or later and it sucks and it makes you itchy and it's gross and it probably doesn't have the best stuff in it. So don't be tough, just wear these gloves. These are these are nitro gloves, like the, the blue sapphire kind. I'll put a link in the thing I got off Amazon, but any kind of gloves that aren't latex is latex that gets eaten up by resin too quick. I wanna put these on because I'm gonna start handling some resin. Uh, I made another video showing what kind of towels I use. These are, these are um, 12 inch by 12 inch microfiber towels that I got on the internet. internet. Amazon has them sometimes. I'll put a link in the description. Sometimes they don't, but there's another website that has them too. I got these for cheap with free shipping. I used to use these, but like I said in the other video, they, they leave a lot of fuzz behind. So I'll only use them for a first pass and then I'll switch to these because I'm going to wipe all the fuzz out. I'll show you what I do. I have a little squirter of a 95% IPA or whatever it is. I think it's 90, whatever the highest percentage is that, that we all use is 95, whatever. I first I do, I spray down. You can dump some in here, but I, spraying is just as effective as dumping and it's a, it's a little more frugal, a little bit less wasteful. So I'll spray it down. Take one of these thick cloths because they're nice and absorbent and I'll just put it down and I'll just run it around. And all I'm doing is scooping up all the junk. <gasps> Ooh, wish I could, I don't know if it's, ooh. That's odd. Okay, so hold on. Let me. So this is the first pass, and I'll tell you why I said ooh in a second. Um, is that a, I think there's a scrap. I think there's an actual piece. That's a weird. That's a weird failure. Um, so I'm using this to just to, the first pass. I'm just soaking up most of the resin that didn't drip out right here, putting it in there because I'm going to cure this before I throw it away, uh, which is temporarily. But I've got I've got a good I've got a good chunk of it up. I'll show you right now. Uh, but I, the failure, I feel like here and here was like a real odd failure where there's just a couple little pieces like of a support or something that's stuck on, not a full like, you know, like coin sized dollop that usually sticks in the FEP. So we got kind of lucky there. Um, let's see. So I'm going to spray this down again. I'm not, I used, if you notice just now, I use paper towels to like wipe my gloves off, my fingers off, so they're not all goopy so I can manipulate things. But I'm only using either the microfiber towels and I'm switching out, I'm not only using them for the first pass because they're so linty. Um, I'm only using these specially cut microfiber towels, which I'll have a link in the description on, the, on this portion now, because I don't, you do not use paper towels in your FEP. You will scratch and chew it up. It might not seem like you're doing much. And oh, it doesn't seem any different than the other. It is different than using microfiber towels and it will jack up your FEP and give them micro scratches and the scratches will lead to it breaking down quicker and blah, 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 and less perfect prints. So that's that's pass two. That over there, and I'm gonna spray this in. Usually I would say, I really thought about it until I said how to make this video for you guys. Uh, two to three passes of the, well, one of the main towel, like three to four passes total of this and, and your pep is pretty clean, I say. Uh, you might be a scientist or somewhere else that says that's not true. But like after I do the, the, the first couple passes, when I f I'll fold the napkin in half and then I'll kind of wipe the edges. The edges aren't really important. I mean, you don't need them sparkling clean. Although if you're like me, you probably you know freak out if they're not clean. Uh, and then I'll wipe the top, I'll fold it in half again and just get any stuff off of there. Beautiful. Now we're gonna, this is where, um, like I said, we had a failure here, but I wiped it off. So it like, it kind of came up with the FEP. So I was a little bit gentle when I was rubbing. You couldn't see it, but I was, I was rubbing less hard to kind of eat, to get that, let the uh, first couple, you know, squirts the, the IPA soak in and eat up, you know, loosen it up. But those pieces that were failures came right off right there. If you have a failure, what you want to do is do the first the first pass with, with a thicker cloth to wipe up all the goop. Then you want to spray a lot of IPA, like probably like, 30 squirts of this stuff and let it sit right on that where that uh, where your failures are for a good like I don't know three to five minutes I would say and then you want it with a one hand a brand new clean glove hold your thing up you want to push on the on the um, center or the edge of your failed piece you want to push up with your finger and just kind of finger it up and it'll eventually if you let it soak long enough you can kind of massage it a little bit but don't don't wreck your felt. Uh, and you can FEP and you can it'll 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 eventually pop off But if it's not popping off right away, you probably didn't let the alcohol set on it long enough Let it set another two or three minutes Don't try and force it after like 10 or 30 seconds because you're just gonna jack up your FEP and you don't need to you keep your FEP nice and clean So there's this do, do, do. so this is like the third third pass of this 
Do one last one, make sure it's pristine and beautiful. Yeah, these microfiber cloths are really good because they're cheap. I mean, they're, they're, a pack of them is like 10 or 15 bucks, but you get 50 of them and you cut them to, to like 36 squares per 50 sheets. So it's hundreds of squares and you'll be noticed I'm probably gonna use like six, maybe seven in this whole process. Okay, now my FEP is beautiful. Um, the reason why we don't touch the bottom or mess with the bottom because I want the bottom to be clean without having to clean it off or having to wipe it down. I'm a little bit paranoid, so sometimes I will give it a couple squirts um, and I'll grab one of these or usually I'll have a bigger piece of this and I'll just make sure there's no lint or anything on here. But that's not super necessary if you use a perfect, a very clean brand new towel, like a, a shop towel that came out of the roll or a stand. So as long as you blow any stuff off of it. So now our FEP is looking, you know, this FEP is months old and probably needs to be replaced pretty soon, but it's looking pretty clean. Um, what we're gonna do now, this is controversial, so look away if you must. I like to use a 3-in-1 PTFE lubricant. I like to just get a couple drops and I just drizzle it on there and I will put it on, get another microfiber towel, that's where the seventh towel comes in, and I'll just rub it around a little bit, just, just a light, just so there's a light bit of it on there. And that's it. Some people say, don't use it, it'll make your prints fail. I have not had that experience and my FEPs have lasted a long time and I've never had failures after using this stuff. And I feel that it's just a little bit of extra, even if it's just like, I don't know, superstition. It makes me feel like my FEP is, it, it tunes up, my, it protects my FEP a little bit more unless our prints come off easier. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, I don't really care. It's like this stuff, like I said in another video, um, I got a bottle of this stuff at uh, Lowe's for like four bucks. The bottle is like up to here. I can use this thing until 2040 when the you know when the ice caps melt, we all die anyways. So it's it's worth the you know the four dollars <laughs> investment over for 20 years um, in peace of mind, right? So then, FEPS clean. You can put your lid back on your 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 um, printer when you're doing this process. There's my garage door shut. There's not a lot of dust, so I'm not too worried. But there was a piece of gray fuzz from that towel in there. I just blew off. Put it back down onto my bed. Bunk. Put my screws on, make sure not to drop your screws into your vat because they're heavy and metal and they have sharp edges and they could scratch your fab. And then you just screw it back on. And um, you do it down tight to like turning tight where they won't turn anymore, but you don't, you don't have to like lock them down because there's no special thing that's gonna happen if you put them on too tight except you're gonna bend your thing, bend your um, posts or break them off someday. But that's it, that's how, you, that's how you clean your resin. And then when you're done, you're gonna wanna cure that in the sun or with a UV flashlight or even in your current thing if you can. And then you're good to go. Um, thanks for watching.